Christianity doesn't take off big time because Jesus' holy wisdom is so right. It's because the right people decide to back the wisdom. Who are these Christians? What is this strange religion? In the early 4th century, the Roman Emperor Constantine changed the whole Roman Empire from paganism to Christianity. Here he is, thinking it up. Constantine sees that through the centuries when Romans are persecuting Christians, when Christians are tortured and crucified and roasted over fires, they don't break. The early Christian martyrs give themselves joyfully up to death because of their spiritual beliefs. I've heard it said they turn the other cheek. <laughs> hmm, thinks Constantine. I can use that fortitude to bind the Roman Empire together, to bring order to Roman society. And so it is that the Roman Empire becomes a Christian empire. This move by Constantine causes Christian art to become enormous. Christian art about Christ is little daubs on cave walls. Roman art about the empire is colossal. Christian daubs are dwarfed by Roman toes alone. The Christian movement was spread throughout the Roman Empire. Constantine raised it up out of the humble shadows to his own mighty imperial level. There's absolutely no evidence at all that Constantine ever attended a church service. He didn't particularly believe in Jesus. He wasn't personally a Christian. He did the whole thing for political reasons alone. Why not let them worship their God? No one believes in the old gods. Constantine casts a cynical eye over the Greek and Roman art that covers the ancient world. Constantine plunders statues from all over the Roman Empire and brings them to his new capital city, Constantinople, to glorify it. Now it's Istanbul, and we're seeing the faded remains of the Ottoman civilization. But then it was the first glorious rise of the Christian civilization. And if you're sailing down here in the fourth century AD, you'd be seeing all these pagan statues everywhere, thousands of them. The old gods, their religious meaning on the way out. Christianity's power on the way in. Both now stand for Constantine's greatness. Get the old statues massed up. It's not for awe at the old divine powers, but awe at the new unity. One empire, one emperor, one religion. Constantine starts a big church building program to rival the pagan temples. He dreams of the biggest, the Church of Holy Wisdom. This is it, the version that gets built 300 years after Constantine's death, but based on Constantine's vision. How implausible of the early Christian communities to imagine that their Christ could overthrow the great pagan Roman Empire. Weirdly, through Constantine's manoeuvring, it happens. But actually, it's a reverse takeover. The new super-Christianity, Roman Christianity, sees that spiritual purity and lack of artifice isn't going to work. Christianity triumphs, but in doing so, it isn't what it was. It's no longer the way of the meek and the humble and love thy neighbour. It becomes the religion of power, the religion of warfare and of gold. Mosaics in the church of San Vitali, built in Constantinople's western outpost, Ravenna. They're 1,600 years old. What used to be simple, direct signs of pure hope, done in an artless style by underground Christian communities, is now Three centuries after the big kickoff given to Christianity by the Emperor Constantine, 
a super amplified language of pure power. You're being shown why the Emperor's the Emperor and you're not. You're ruled by Christ and by the Emperor Justinian. They wear the same purple robes, they both have their retainers, they're both shown against timeless golden backgrounds as if they've been there forever. These mosaics spell out authority, the authority the Emperor has over everything on Earth because he's the representative on Earth of Christ and the authority that Christ has over heaven. You're seeing Christ and his angelic bodyguards, and there's the emperor and his crew. Paul couldn't imagine art about God, because the only art he knew was statues of sexy bodies that disturbed him. But Christian art breaks up the muscular, rounded Greek body into flat, patterned symbols. Your eye doesn't focus on a body. There is no single focus. Greek statues show you the pinnacle of what man can be. Christian art shows you the idea of what God is. You are nothing. That's good because the flesh is nothing. The mosaic stones are laid deliberately unevenly to catch the light differently. The effect is to make everything radiate and shimmer. A symbolic world, the immaterial realm and the material realm coexisting. Mysterious signs tell you that deep inside you are known. Christ is both totally human and totally divine. You don't know how it works, you have faith. Change the dial a little, get in some different symbols and buzzwords and big ideas, and we are the early Christians. We don't know why we look at our stuff in our museums either, our equivalent of churches. In the past, they craved a universal explanation of everything. Now we're interested in the breakdown of everything. We want to see mysterious signs for that. If we're sometimes baffled, at least we know it's us. We know it's modern. We're baffled on our own terms. Art allowed the early Christians to be awed by the inexplicable on their own terms. A thousand years of images of Jesus, from sublime, ethereal being on gold to tortured God-man on a cross, reminding us that Christianity is a death cult. The idea was it would make us behave better. But what do we do with him? Now that you could say it's the Lord of creation there, but the advance of knowledge tells us that you could also say we're looking at art about a myth. We're still human. We still have hungry souls that need to be fed. I think this is now the purpose of a staggering sight like this, the purpose of art. Religion's depths, its beauty, its consolations, its offering of answers to what can't be answered by anything else. This is now the realm of art. Art has that possibility of civilizing us, the possibility of defeating chaos that religion used to have, that religion was invented for. The story of art that's often told is of artists looking at early Christian art and saying, yes, but we'll take it in a more realistic direction, away from flatness. The story that isn't heard so much is this. A guy rides out of the desert, totally confident of his own spirituality, needing a way of expressing it visually. He looks at all these patterns and says, yes to that, but no to meaningless pictures. Go abstract. It's another momentous change in human consciousness. No stories, no symbolic scenes, a 
new form of art shows how it's possible to have a spiritual, transcendent experience without fixing it to an image. <laughs>